what is up everybody welcome to the burn down youtube channel uh i want to give you guys a update on the jimmy and then i figure what we'll do is we will throw a bit of a lesson in here on what i'm working on because i think it might benefit you guys um i was gonna try to film and work on this thing but it just takes forever to film and work at the same time plus uh, we had a bunch of problems with all my gear and I don't have the money to go out and buy cameras and computers at the moment. So we're going to just limp through and deal with what we got. I'll give you guys updates, but I have enough time. I want to share something with you that I think will benefit you guys uh, with sheet metal hammer and dolly work. So we spin you around. So if you'll notice something is missing up here. And it's basically the top of the truck. And then we also came around here and took this panel out. So um, I was working on this and I will show you down here. This is our friend, right? It is beat, beat to hell, brazed, which means you can see with the heat where they put a bunch of heat in it and then they pushed it way in and stretched metal here so you're not going to get that back into shape and um, i was looking at this thing and it was terrible so the decision was made that i'm going to pretty much get a roof skin and use this as a template and put that back over um, and then we have this outer piece to contend with as well so what i'm imagining you can kind of see right there i fixed majority of it but it dips down a little bit i think this thing got hit pushed it down and then what they did is when they're pushing it back up they actually beat the hell out of this panel which is what i want to share with you guys and kind of show you my uh metal bumping technique on how we kind of get this thing back in order um yeah man we got out of the woods on a lot of stuff with this but that wasn't one of them the other thing i'll share with you guys is they actually make door shells so this is a complete door shell from classic industries look at that thing inside out if you're wondering how it fit the fit is decent but it's not perfect right? so if we put it in here uh, we've got a little bit of a gap but this is fine i think for a truck of this vintage uh, this edge didn't want to line up so we had to smack that down to get get it to tuck and play nice and then this wing window there's folds in here that actually weren't correct so when i was trying to put it in it just would not go in to save my life but we figured all that out um, it has the proper bracing in here and then the holes here didn't quite line up so we elongated them a little bit but all in all i think it's it's pretty good for what it is oh and then this um we kind of had to fix that too i actually had to weld a little extension on here but regardless it once you're all said and done it fits uh, pretty well um, I ended up having to redo this piece this was all jacked up so we cut this out and fixed the little door striker so this is all happy this is kind of where we were um, and then we got on to this and then I kind of got stumped and I'm like man it's gonna be a problem so what I ended up doing is we drilled out all the spot welds we're gonna work this piece on the bench then I'm gonna coat and fix all this we'll strip it all out a little bit better We'll coat it with the undercoating paint, obviously not where we're going to weld, and we'll put it back in place. And then when I go to do a little bit of body work on it, it is way less than what we would have had to do. So uh, that is a quick update on that where it's at. Oh, uh, vintage air too. Bam. So let me show you guys that. We got the vintage air unit in and installed. And then what I did here, you can see where I marked the template for the panel that they send you. But we're already here. So instead of just using that, um, I just shaved all the stuff. So we made it nice, nice, and then drilled the holes. And this was my uh, install just to make sure everything fit. And then we'll take this back out, put it in the box, and we'll come back later. And then I filled in the holes we don't need, kept all the ones we do. So we were looking good there. And I was hoping that this was kind of the extent of the metal work. And then life happened. So let's get over the bench, give you guys a quick lesson for today, and then hopefully it's useful. So here she is. I know on camera it's probably gonna be hard to see if you can see it in person you get 100% on it but 
if you look down this, I don't know if it's going to show up on camera. We'll kind of roll the, the angle. This has a slight curvature to it, right? Like if you were sitting in your truck, you had one of these trucks, your roof right here curves. And I couldn't figure out for the life of me why somebody beat this up. Because I'm like, nothing should ever hit this panel. Like what happened? And then it dawned on me when the top got pushed in, somebody got in here and was beating on this panel up to push that front portion up right so instead of putting like a big block or something on it and trying to spread the load and kind of pressure it up and pull the top they were just smacking this and all they did was cave it in and just made it terrible um i've already done a bunch of work and you can see the shape is actually pretty decent especially in this area they hit it so hard and put holes in it right so you could see kind of where i worked it and i was thinking about you guys i was like you know what somebody would probably benefit from this because if you've never done hammer and dolly work there's actually a technique to it so um i will share this portion with you so over here i don't know if that dent comes through on camera or not right in this area and it's not a crease but it's pushed in pretty darn good right and if we flip it over you can see the little mountains uh on the back side of this so this is the last piece to fix and then i'll finesse some more of this to where i get it to where i like it fill in the holes and then we'll address uh, like some edges and a few other things before we get it all cleaned up to weld it back in but let's go over this real quick i'll share it with you and hopefully it helps you guys if you have questions you can leave them in the comments okay so you've got a dinger a dent you've got some basic tools hammer and dolly there's all kinds of different hammers and shapes uh, things you can use to get after stuff i got a whole box of these when i go to swap meet i like to if i see a unique dolly shape I always try to get it because I'm like, oh, you know, that could be used for, you never know. And then hammer wise, um, these two are kind of my favorites. The square one I use a lot. And then I like this little flat guy here because it's not quite a pick. You can kind of do more damage than good with the pick portion. But I like the face on this one because it has a nice big round flat head. Bam, and it kind of spreads the load. There's also other more advanced tools for it, like a slapper and things like that. But we'll just kind of go over basic technique because you guys probably aren't gonna go on a limb and go collect hammer and dollies like I do, like a weirdo. So, the first thing is when these panels are made, it is spring steel. So, they stamp it with a tremendous amount of force and that steel basically kind of turns into like a spring steel, right? It's mild or whatever it is that they use, but when they stamp it, it gets shocked and smashed into that position, right? When you get damage on a panel, right like you have the damage on this guy here where it's all pushed in this panel doesn't want to be like this it wants to be the stamp that came out of the machine that was like a million tons or whatever they put on this i'm not exactly sure so don't quote me maybe somebody knows it's probably 10 tons or however much force that they stamp this out of a flat sheet right in one whack so when you're when you're smacking this part it's called tapping or bumping there's a book it's called the art of metal bumping it's a little red handbook they used to give out in like the 50s i read that thing and then practiced and i've done lots of cars over the years a lot of earlier cars and then even into like your later model stuff um the other thing too the metal on this this is like a 20 gauge might be even a little bit thinner so you're just helping it go back to where it wanted to be you're not beating it you're not a caveman i know this hammer's pretty big but literally you're just like tapping it and then you can feel the spring of the material when you're doing it, right? It's almost like playing the drums, right? So like when you're hitting it, you're, you're, you're tapping it like that. You're not, you know, this isn't carpentry. You're not driving some 10 penny nails home. Um, and then the purpose of the dolly is to back it. So when you hit it, it has a stop to it. So the force of your hammer pushes the steel down, but there's two different ways to go about it. There is on dolly, right? So you would have a piece of metal on the dolly and you'd be smashing it in between. The only time I really do that is if I have like a high spot, you put the dolly there and you tap it and then you'll hear, because this is has a different sound. It's nice and solid. It doesn't sound like the tin here. When you're smacking them, this will be hollow. It'll have the hollow sound. And then you'll hear this. It's bottomed out in between. You have to be careful though when you're doing an on dolly technique because as soon as you smash the metal between your hammer and this it doesn't have anywhere to go so what happens is it pancakes out and you'll stretch the material and if it's stretched then you have to shrink it because there's nowhere to bring it back and you'll get the oil canning i know you guys have seen that where you go ba -doop, ba -doop, and you push on the metal right so that's oil canning because the metal stretched and that needs to be shrunk down 
the the majority of the technique that I do use is you still use the dolly to support the material but like you would hang the material off of the dolly say here if where I was hammering something and you would tap it and use this as a supporting area that's why you want a bunch of different shaped dollies because you want this to support majority of the shape because you only want to move the panel and bump the panel where the damage is if you don't really support it very well you support it incorrectly when you're hitting here you could be folding it over your dolly or doing something dumb especially if you're getting all caveman froggy with it so um that is kind of what i wanted to tell you guys i'm not gonna you know bang on this and make you guys listen to me banging on sheet steel but maybe what i'll do is i'll turn the camera off we, sh we showed you the damage um and i'll kind of bang on it and beat on it oh another thing too real quick before i get ahead of myself is you want to work the damage backwards that's one thing they go over in the book as well so if this dent was pushed in here what happens is the damage goes away from the area where like it was being pushed in and then it would stop so you work it in the reverse pattern a lot of people when they see a big crown they want to hammer right in the middle of that thing and then push it back and then what happens is those edges are folded in and then you have the crown so if you hit the crown it'll fold like that right like if you had a a, a hump like somebody said bat and they made a uh, a little molehill like I showed you guys on here and it looked like this. If you hit in the dead center on the top, it's going to go down because these edges that, that fold up still give it structure. So what you'd want to do in a case like that is you'd want to actually hammer around it and start bringing it down until you got to the center of the, the thing. So that way you're folding the, those edges back down like that. <laughs> right? So that is a basic run through. Uh, I hope it helps you guys. And that's, you know, to work the damage on something like this. And I took it out so I could access both sides. It makes life way easier. You might think it's a pain in the ass and it's stupid to pull a panel out because it took me a while to get this out and you have to be ginger with it. But I'm going to be able to do much better work on the bench. We'll get it really close. We'll weld it back in. And then we're looking at like a skim coat to just kind of finalize this thing and make it decent because you're sitting so close to the panel. But that is my long-winded thing. If you guys have questions, um, I don't know. I mean, I guess I could do some time lapse in the future or something if you want to see me straighten something out. But I think you kind of get the gist of it in watching you guys swing a hammer and dolly. <laughs> That's not a video I'd like to sit and watch. But if you have questions, please let me know and I'll explain it as best I can. And if I really can't get to it in the comments, I'll make a video and explain it to you if I really have to. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks for being a part of it. Uh, we'll bring you more updates and then I'll show you the finished version when we get this thing all straightened up and put back in the truck. And we'll show you guys um, how we did.